Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, today I'm here to speak a bit about communications. So first of all, I have I want to thank all the partners and also all the organization staff because last year I couldn't be here, but I enjoyed a lot uh, watching the videos. I think there was a a great level. So thanks. It's a pleasure to be here today, and also thanks to all of of you, because I know that this, despite there's another track, there's also just now is being played the first game of the KHL finals. <laughs> so thanks to be here instead of being there. <laughs> okay, regarding the, the agenda for today, uh, I, I will speak a bit about me. Then I will go to contextualize a bit communications. And then we will see how to solve different issues about communications more exactly about chatting. One way is uh, through WebSockets, and the other way is through XMPP protocol. So who am I? I'm just a software engineer. Uh, I'm last days uh, focused on Go and doing DevOps stuff. But I also work intensively in PHP, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I'm also the co-founder of Friends of Go. Friends of Go is a Golang open source community that we will do with a, a workmate since the beginning of this year. Uh, it's focused mostly on Spanish-speaking community because, unfortunately, we in Spain are not the best English-speaking country. So we want to to approach the Go language and all this uh, technical um, documentation that is written in English. We want to approach it to, to those that does not know English. So we are working hard to to, to do it. Also, we, we were working hard with other Golang communities there to, to try to build up something like GopherCon Russia, but there, <laughs> GopherCon Spain or whatever similar. OK, so why uh, I will talk about communications and why about Go? So mostly uh, because two reasons that are related with the companies I've been working. So there are at Rapalo, where I'm working now, and at and Nepcom. Okay, Nepcom is a, a startup that I built with two, two mates, two partners. Uh, it's an instant, application, instant messaging application like Telegram, WhatsApp, and so on. But we're focused on business communications. So uh, we, we really uh, worry about the privacy of the user, the security, and we also provide some business features. Unfortunately, uh, until now, it's not sustainable. <laughs> it's not easy. So this is why I'm working now in Atrapalo, but uh, it at least it was a, or it's been a, a great experience. So I learned a lot about uh, this kind of issues while communicating and how to face it. At Rapalo, where I'm working as a software engineer, is an e-commerce where we sell uh, both urban and vacational laser products, so uh, hotel book, books, flights, uh, tickets to theaters, to concerts, etc. So we are mainly focused on Spain uh, market, also LATAM. But as what we sell is not uh, our products, we sell uh, we must sell products from others, from third party companies. We have a lot of integrations, and there is where uh, Go happens. So that was all about me, <laughs> and now it's communications time, uh, which is the main topic for today. Uh, first of all, if we want to speak about communications, we need to know or to be, or to be aware uh, about the basic elements of, of communication. So first of all, we, have, we, we need a sender, that is someone who wants to communicate something, of course. And on the other side, we need a receiver that it's someone who is open to be communicated. Here, it's very important that the receiver should be uh, open to be communicated. Otherwise, the communications wouldn't happen. 
Also, we need a message that is what the sender wants to communicate. Then we need the channel that is where the message travels from the sender to the receiver. And at the end, we have the code. So the language, how the message is encoded and, de and decoded from the sender to the receiver. OK, now to try to understand what are the communications problems, we have to go to the, back to the origins and see what happened there. Probably <laughs> most of you have seen these photos are from a long time ago. But they also have uh, quite interesting issues that, as we will see, we are nowadays trying to solve as well. First of all, they need to find re reliable channels because if we go back, for example, if someone wants to, to do this painting into a wall, they need to choose the proper wall, the proper paint, to, to ensure that when the, the receiver uh, reads it or interprets, uh, it will remain there. So there's one of the issues. Another issue is the unawareness of the reader's availability. So they most of the times have to read, write something or draw something, but they uh, most of the times don't know uh, when the reader will, will read it. Another issue that happened this, <laughs> these days uh, is the shared code. So they can paint a drawing, whatever, but of course not everything is able to understand this, this kind of, of messages. So they also have the issue of a shared code. And finally, they also need hidden messages because, for example, they, they have to write these messages into walls that were, were, uh, were obviously public, but probably sometimes they don't need that anyone that can get into the, the cave and read the message can understand it. So they also have to face with issues uh, related with what nowadays we call privacy or cryptography. Nowadays, fortunately, the communication seems easier. It's only seems, <laughs> I would say. Uh, the communications today are based basically on instant messaging applications like Telegram, WhatsApp, so on. F also on phone calls, also on emails, and they are more, more or less the, the most basic ways to communicate nowadays. So today I will focus on uh, instant messaging communications because I think that are one of kind of communications that are very uh, interesting. So there are some of the features of this kind of communications. First of all, their reliability. So they ensure the reception. Uh, most of, uh, of you probably are used to use applications like WhatsApp, Telegram, who nowadays can tell us if the message was received by the server or by the other partner. So it's a good feature. Also, it provides us immediacy, so no loss of urgency or excitement, which is also very important in some kind of communications because if I'm here at GopherCon, I want to share something with a, a mate, and I have to send a card that will be delivered to him a few days <laughs> later, it has no sense. It, it loses this excitement. Also, uh, the fluency is another very important feature because uh, it's, it, it makes easy to, to, to go and keep on this, this immediacy because, for example, you can have a fax and you can receive the messages immediately or you can uh, have a, an email, but it's not as fluent as, as wanted to, to, to keep a, a fluent com communication. And some other benefits that has instant uh, messaging communications today are privacy, con understand easiness. For example, nowadays there are a lot of companies investigating or doing research in, in trying to translate uh, communications uh, in real time. So these kind of communications are very interesting. And today also, one of the approaches I will show 
is WebSockets. Why WebSockets? Mostly because they provide a continuous connection through sockets. So uh, they allow us to have the server push feature. So uh, we, as as client, uh, don't have to be polling all the time to the server to, to ask, I, I have new messages, I have new messages, also because it provides us full duplex communication, so the sender and the receiver can receive and send at the same time. And also, as they are continuous connections, they are, they, there is low latency there, so it's also a, a very good point. Okay, so now I will show uh, some of the most simplest uh, situations in, in instant messaging communications. I will show a bit of Go code through WebSockets. But the idea of these examples is to show how complex could, could be the instant messaging communication. So the first example or the first situation is a communication one to one without server. That's probably a bit strange or rare nowadays, but it also could be the, the most simple communication because we can, we, if we know how to reach the other partner, we can start a, a, a communication and there are a lot of things that we don't have to worry. We'll see then. The issues here, of course, we have to know where is the, the, the receiver when we want to send a message. And of course, there are no offline messages. If both of them are not connected, the communication is impossible, could not happen. So uh, with WebSockets, with just this sample code, uh, using the WebSocket uh, library from Gorilla, you can just uh, turn an HTTP handler, a common HTTP handler, into uh, an upgrader. So this way, we, we, we can uh, get the the HTTP communication open, so uh, we have a WebSocket, and we can continuously, uh, through this simple loop, uh, reading me all the messages that we receive th through this, this com connection. In, in these examples, I didn't do error handling, <laughs> because as it is uh, <laughs> a huge debate about this, for sake of simplicity, I avoid it. But of course, it will be needed in production environments. Also, on the other side, with these few simple lines of code, we can expose uh, uh, an HTTP handler. Sorry, uh, uh, with these few lines, we can connect to the uh, HTTP handler that we saw in the last example and start sending messages. For example, just uh, starting a, web, a new web socket, uh, saying the protocol and, and the address and the path of the handler, of course. So in this case, uh, as we are speaking in a, in a communication that there's only one-to-one -one without server, both has to expose the HTTP handler and both have to connect, to, connect back to the other handler to, to send messages. The next situation is more or less the same, but with a server at the middle. Yeah. Now, with uh, this situation, we can solve the issues we have seen previously, because now we can have uh, offline messages, because if we want to send a message, but the other partner is not connected, uh, the server can take it and go. Uh, and, and deliver it to the, the receiver then later. And also, uh, we can solve the loc localization problem because each time one of, of both uh, gets connection, they can connect to the server and let the server handle these communication issues. So it becomes easier to connect together. But of course, there are also issues here. One of the, mo the, the main issue here is we have a likeness of, of privacy because as there is a, a server be between us, uh, there is something that, that there is someone sorry that can read what we communicate about. A simple example also here we can see this example that would be the handler of uh, that w would be in the server. So each time a user connects to the to the server. Uh, the server gets all the 
the messages that this user has received while it was offline. So I, I get from a repository. I won't enter into detail about persistence. And then they can also get the connection as seen later, seen, seen previously, sorry, and, and send all the messages. Also, now in the, in the client side, we need to have a, a routine or a process uh, that is listening in the connection and reading all the messages that arrive to us. Okay, now the next situation is one-to-one -one with server as well, but now with ciphered connection. So now what will uh, add to the previous situation is an end-to-end -end encryption. So this way, we will solve the, the previously issues of privacy langness. But now, it starts to, to, to appear new issues, of course, because it increases the, the complexity of the communications, because we have to establish keys with, the, with our partner. We have to, to trust in the in the end-to-end -end encryption. For example, nowadays, the end-to-end -end encryption that provides WhatsApp is, is very, it's, it's not <laughs> trust for some people, no? So there are also issues. In Go, concretely, uh, we had the, uh, at, in the crypto package, uh, we had uh, an implementation of the OTR uh, protocol that is, well, encryption, that is the off-the-record encryption. Uh, but it was deprecated but because this implementation was the version 2, and this version 2 was uh, deprecated. So now the, the most up-to-date uh, version of, of this protocol is, is uh, number 3 and working number 4. So this library from Coim is uh, working well. So it's the way to, to, to go to achieve end-to-end -end, uh, encrypted communication through Go. So just with these uh, two simple lines, we can, uh, we can send and receive messages. I have put it <laughs> with, comment, uh, with, with comment, sorry, the output that we, that we see. Uh, about these messages. In this situation, uh, I simulate a conversation between Bob and Annalise, <laughs> as, as usual. And here, the only thing that we have to do is uh, to build a pair of keys, and then we can just start uh, communicating with end-to-end -end encryption, very important. Another situation is when we have uh, one too many communications, for example, channels in, in Telegram, for example. It can be a uh, few senders, but the important thing is that we're speaking about a group that is communicating together, but not all of them can uh, send messages to the others. In this situation, there are also issues because uh, the privacy can get more and more and more complex because now there's not only a, a share of, of or, a sta or an establish of uh, of keys, but there's also uh, uh, they all of them have to to uh, reach an agreement to to share the the keys, so uh, it, it could be very complex. The same happens in the five and the last one uh, situation, sorry, where. There is many-to-many -many, uh, communications. That's very hard. Also, we can uh, continue adding new situations that can get uh, as harder to, to manage as your imagination. Because, for example, nowadays uh, we have features like last activity, if the receiver has read or not the message, and so on. So. Uh, as you can see, there are too much work to do if we have to implement our own instant messaging applications. It could be a real MS. And this is where XMPP protocol happens. Okay, XMPP protocol is, are, are, are the letters from the Extensible Messaging Presence Protocol, also known as Jabber. And it, it's built on top of XML. So I, I, I know that 
XML has its issue also, its issues also. But well, I think that XMPV protocol provides us some some quite of benefits that that are interesting. So this protocol is defined as a simple messaging and presence protocol in the request for comments 6120 and 6121. But as its name says, uh, it's also an extensible protocol. So there are a lot of what they call chips that are extensions of the protocol. So all of those kind uh, complex situations that I tried to show you uh, are almost defined in the protocol. So each client or server that implements these extensions of the protocol uh, will so will has solved this this kind of issues. So nowadays we can have the uh, extension definitions from a lot of different kind of uh, of things or features. For example, last activity also for publish and subscribe, uh, language translation as said, also for push notifications uh, for mobile applications, and it's it's very funny because the the ones that that uh, define it, uh, the protocol, when they started to define this publish subscribe uh, extension, they had an idea or, or they they had a conclusion that was oh maybe our protocol it's a bit <laughs> a mess or it can be built on top of this extension because at the end with publish and subscribe you can also have communications you can uh, have communications in in groups channels and so on so <laughs> it's a bit funny so <laughs> this protocol it's for some people it's a bit outdated here are some of the use case not all of them are currently being used this, using this protocol but some of the others yes uh, probably most of you <laughs> uh, recognize some of them and in booth uh, a chatting application the origin that it's like uh, steam but from electronic arts for night game league of legends and also Apple and, and Google use use it to for the push notifications. Uh, also, WhatsApp. It's not here, but they also uh, an slightly modified version of XMPP. That I think I would say that it's called Fun XMPP or something similar to that. So now that seems easier than expected, at least for the client. Uh, uh, because, uh, as we can, uh, as we said previously, if we have to start to handle all, all of these situations manually developing, we can uh, reach a project of a uh, month or, or years. No? So now, depending on the situation, uh, if our use case is only to achieve co communications. Sometimes it's easier to just take a client, just take a server that implements the XMPP protocol, and just go. So as we're in GopherCon, I will show a bit of the state of the art between Go and an XMPP protocol. So on the client side, we have on the top the uh, AZ AGL uh, XMPP client, but it's a bit outdated because last commit is from uh, 2017. But there's also a COIM that is a client from the same company that that maintains this, the of the record library that I, I showed previously. So uh, this client last last commit uh, was uh, more or less the. Uh, Ten days ago, so it's it's being maintained. So it's a quite interesting option. Also, uh, in the server side, we have an outdated version that was very uh, or uh, quite uh, common, but it's outdated. But nowadays, there's a guy Ortuman that is uh, maintaining the Jackal server, and precisely he published the last version five days ago. So I, I would encourage you to, to discover this, this wall and to, to get involved in these this projects because I, I think they are very interesting. Uh, 
So just to recap and as takeaways, first of all, uh, as we, uh, as we have seen, communications are not easy as expected or probably as expected by end users or clients. Uh, but on the development, uh, from the development point of view, it could be as hard as you can imagine. Also, uh, another takeaway is that, is that this reflection or this uh, conclusion that we're still facing same issues that uh, humans also had uh, f uh, f uh, a lot of years ago. And at the end, as takeaways for both uh, approaches to, to solve this, these issues about communications, on the one side, I, I would say that WebSockets are for chat development. So probably the best option if you have to develop your own, uh, your own chat application. But as I said previously, if you only need a plug and play chat, uh, probably XMPP is it would be the, the best option. Because, for example, if you have a company, you need to, to have chats for your, uh, your workers. And you have, for example, you, you don't want to, to rely on third partners for privacy, for an economic reason, or whatever. Uh, probably you won't uh, have enough resources to, to develop an entire chat application. So most of the times, the, the most simple uh, way to go is just to install an XMPP server and distribute an XMPP uh, client and just let them <laughs> communicate. Also, uh, one of the key points of this approach is that uh, as there is a, an, an, an open, open protocol and also uh, extensible, if, so, if one day, as we saw, uh, someone uh, stops off maintaining or, uh, its server or its client application, you can just uh, change it, your server, by another one that also implements this protocol and, and, keep, working, and, and keep working. So I think that in each situation, I would go for one or the other option. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Uh, hello. Thanks a lot for your talk. And uh, uh, my question is uh, regarding the metrics protocol. You probably have heard about this protocol. And uh, it seems to be advertised as a modern replacement for XMPP, as far as I know. It's uh, more battery friendly, it's easy to parse because it's based on JSON instead of uh, XML. So uh, the question is uh, whether you have considered using this protocol and uh, why XMPP instead of metrics? Sorry, last question. Uh, have you considered using the metrics protocol instead of XMPP? Are you well, familiar with uh, this protocol? Sorry? Are you familiar with the metrics protocol for instance messaging? Well, in our case, for example, for NEPCOM, we used uh, XMPP protocol because it was uh, simpler for us and also because uh, we, don't, we didn't have uh, enough resources for, for to develop an entire application. So we only uh, want to to focus our our investment uh, to add on top of an XM, XMPP application our business key points or key features. But yes, I, as I said, I, I think it depends on, on the situation. For example, in this in this situation, uh, we, we we developed an application, so we we were not the use case of a company that only need a, a chat for uh, for their workers, uh, and we also applied for for the XMPP protocol. So I think it depends. It depends a bit. Okay, thank you. More questions? Hello, uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, I'm here. So the first question is uh, how to detect spam in your chat? How to? How to detect spam? 
Sorry? Spam. Ah, spam, OK. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I'm not an expert in, in spam, <laughs> uh, so to be honest, I just say that I think that nowadays are a lot of uh, machine learning systems that could detect spam, but uh, to be honest, I'm not an expert in this field, so <laughs> I would prefer to, to not respond this question. Okay, and uh, the second question is, uh, have you tried socket IO protocol? Sorry? Uh, have you tried socket IO protocol? Ah, uh, no, well, I, I have tried, but only just for, um, just to try it, but not in production uh, systems. Thank you. Questions? There is a high chance to win a plush gopher. Right now we have only two. Hey, hello. Thanks for your speech. Um, you mentioned uh, those two repositories that are actively developed, uh, like Coim and uh, Turn Turnip Man or whatever. How are they better than those uh, that are not uh, developed at the moment? What what uh, do they add to those repositories? I, I as opposed to more older uh, versions. You ah. mentioned... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, yes. Alternatives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, the reason uh, about why I, I put bo uh, two repositories is because uh, in, I, I, I'm not sure, but I, I would say that in, in also for sure in the client side, uh, if you look for uh, client XMPP implementations uh, in, in Go for uh, client side and server side, you will see that uh, there are uh, two main uh, repositories or, or libraries that uh, were written f a few years ago, and both are outdated. outdated but uh, in both cases, the, the, those applications that are uh, up to date, that are being maintained nowadays, are a fork from this, uh, from the, the, this original projects. So this is why I put it both, to, just to, to transmit this idea of, uh, as XMPP is a, has an active uh, community behind, uh, one day, if, if you have this use case that you have to uh, implement communications in your company, if one day uh, your, the library that are you using uh, be uh, out of date, uh, you can see that there will be probably uh, more, more options or more alternative. And in this case, it's only Go, but there are also a lot of implementations in other languages. Извините, вопрос по-русски задам. Вы сказали, что используете протокол шифрования. Вот. Вернее, вы используете протокол шифрования между один ко многим. Если да, то какой? So, do you use encryption protocol one to many? And if you do, then what encryption protocol? Do you what? use encryption for sending a single message to many recipients? Yeah, uh, in our case, we use the, this uh, encryption protocol that I've shown, the off the record. But nowadays, there's also, I don't remember the name now, but uh, Telegram uses another one that is built on top of uh, Omemo, that it's also a, an extension of the XMPP protocol. So nowadays, we're precisely doing uh, research and investments to, to go to this protocol because uh, as I said, uh, the, also the encryption is uh, quite uh, complex thing. So, uh, if you, for example, we had a lot of issues uh, of uh, losing messages when implementing some ki uh, some different kind of protocol. So, in in our case, we started with uh, the of the record protocol, but nowadays I I. I think that there are uh, more modern or 
some protocols with with more features because for example also uh, of the record protocol uh, has issues with group chats so uh, a set I, I will go to to investigate this uh, OMEMO protocol uh, as I said and the one of of uh, implemented by telegram that it's also uh, it's open source <laughs> And the last question. Uh, thanks for your speech. Uh, as I remember, XMPP is protocol over XML yeah, messages, yes? Yes. Uh, what will you do if uh, you need to send some binary files or maybe images, etc.? cetera? Uh, maybe some, uh, you know, some issues uh, with that. Yes, uh, as far as I know, that is uh, based in my experience. Uh, in our case, for our, uh, for, for our application, uh, we used uh, uh, the HTTP pro protocol to just uh, upload and download the, this kind of binary files. But uh, there is uh, also an, ext an XMPP extension that defines how to, to manage these situations when, where you have to, to send binary data. So, so uh, I, I, I cannot say, say to you more because, as, as I said, uh, we, we solved this issue through, through a, a, an alternative to the XMPP protocol. But the, the only thing that I, I can do is just recommend to, I, I could send you the, the links to this definition and, and go further and, and do research about it. Oh, okay, thank you. So, to whom you give your go for it? Uh, <laughs> as the best question. Thank you. Okay, thanks.